Hello and welcome to Andy's Airgun Review. Today we're going to be looking at another historic replica rifle. It's the Diana Mauser K98. As always with the historic replica guns, I feel a little of the gun's history will add value to this review. The Mauser K98 was designed by Mauser in Germany and put into service in 1935 and was manufactured until the end of the Second World War, during which time 14.6 million of these were produced. It was a bolt-action rifle with a five-round built-in magazine and had an effective range of about 500 metres using the open iron sights. Now it had a 1,000 metre range using a telescopic sight. The K in K98 stood for Carabiner and was often shortened to Car by the German troops. This meant carbine but the rifle is anything but short compared to a modern day weapon. Now with only five rounds and a slower rate of fire, this wouldn't appear to be able to hold its own against the allied weapons that were increasingly becoming semi-automatic. The Germans, however, had a different method of battle, using the troops as backup for the heavier machine guns. During and at the end of the war, the Russians captured millions of these 7.92mm rifles from the Germans for use by their own troops, who were under-equipped to say the least. These captured weapons were still being used by the Russian troops after the war and are still turning up, turning up in global conflicts, and theatres of war to this day. I suppose that is testament in part to their reliability. As always, with such iconic guns, there is so much information and history to this rifle, a full programme could be made and still not tell the complete story. The Diana K98 Mauser, a long 11.25mm replica underlever air rifle. Now the first thing you notice about this rifle the first time you pick it up is the weight. It's heavy. Tipping the scales at 4.2 kilograms and the really noticeable thing is it carries most of that weight at the front and becomes very tiring to use over any length of time. That said it's a terrific gun with a real crack to it. You feel like you're holding something more than just a 177 Springer air rifle. Now the ambidextrous stock is solid hardwood and even has the sling fittings in the butt to mate up to the side strap further up on the barrel. It is a single shot under lever fixed barrel with open sights front and rear, with the rear sights being adjustable for both range and windage. I fitted a small 4x15 scope 
on the rail system to try and maintain that authentic look. Now the original sniper rifle would have had either a four times or an eight times magnification scope to try and achieve that 1000 meter range. The underlever is simple to use and automatically engages the safety to the rear and it also has a very good locking system that prevents your fingers being trapped in the cocking and loading process. Now the underlever mimics the one third cleaning rod on the original. An interesting side note, you needed two other friends with these rifles to join those rods together to be able to clean the barrels out on your rifles. Now the recoil pad is solid and will probably have been used as a weapon in itself on the original. The trigger is Diana's T06 trigger and is a two stage with a really nice feel to it. Naturally, being a Springer, there is a bit of a kick to it, which adds to the overall experience. And if you're going to add a scope to this, get some good mounts. This little budget item I had lying around was creeping badly after a session using this gun. Whilst this is not an exact replica, it doesn't have a bolt for example, it does a pretty passable job and has maintained a high level of usability while I've had it. If you're into historic weapons but still want to do some backyard plinking with a substantial well presented gun, this is well worth a look. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review. If you have, please give us a thumbs up and of course feel free to share it with your friends. As always, there are more reviews being made currently and if you want to get to see them as soon as they come out, then don't forget to subscribe, either in the link below or by clicking on the AAR logo on the screen at the end. Oh, and click on the alarm bell logo too for the new posting alert. And of course, here is a recommended review for you to take a look at. Well, that's it from me. It just leaves me to say thank you for watching and of course, a big thank you to Drapers for all their help and support in supplying these guns for me to review for you. Hope to see you next time on Andy's Airgun Review.